at MetLife, Peter, um, you were here in L.A. I'm sure you were thrilled to have been at SoFi Stadium and not MetLife yesterday. Yeah, I, I felt oddly vindicated. I had a weird feeling on this one. A lot of Jets love after the win over the Patriots. A lot of hype, especially on this show, mm. especially from this mm. talking head. And it just felt weird. Sean Payton, there's a trip coming to, to London that they're probably looking at. This is what I said last week on the show, and I had a weird, sick feeling in my belly. Take okay. a listen. If you're a Jets player or team, do not overlook this team. I know the trip to London's coming, and I know you're still feeling yourself from that Thursday night game, but Rodgers was big on this. How do you handle some positivity? How do you handle some yep. success? Because I assure you this, Sean Payton and those Broncos are feeling pretty good after beating Tampa, and they spent the week in West Virginia at the Greenbrier getting ready, and they are like on one of these road trips, us against the world type deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 1 o'clock start. It's not easy for a West Coast team, but they've been on the East Coast all week preparing for this. Do not overlook the Broncos, Jets fans, and do not overlook the Broncos, Jets players. Peter, how dare you? I don't know if they <laughs> overlooked them. I'm just saying. It was, it, it, I mean... The truth of the matter is, we'll go around the horn, and Kyle, I'm sure, you know, has has a take too from the New York market. But like, you're not going to win games with ten penalties. No. You're not going to win games when you can't move the ball. Brees Hall is on a milk carton somewhere. He's missing. I have no idea where Ooh. he is in this offense. And then when they get to the goal line, it's not Brees Hall. It's the, it's not Braylon Allen, who's been, you know, this bulldozer. They go to Brees Hall, and he can't get over it. And then of course, Zerline misses a, a kick in the rain because they couldn't get a little bit closer. Really frustrating, and as I was so hyped about the Jets after that Thursday night when I'm still hyped, I still think the Jets can do this. But gosh, it's a real, real, real dip low into the valley after a real high peak for excitement for those fans. Yeah, you, you start talking about the Jets and their lack of production at this point. You really don't know what they are. You know, I don't think they, they really have an identity at this point in time. Mm. I think they're looking to A.A. Ron to be out there to be their savior. And if you want him to be your savior, then to your point, Brees Hall, you got to start toting that rock. This, this, this new reconstructed offensive line, you got to protect. Aaron Rodgers cannot run. Not only is he older, right, he's coming off the Achilles injury. You can't give up 10 sacks on a season. You can't let this dude be under pressure this entire time. He is out there. You mentioned John Wick earlier, KB. This is who I call John Wick. This dude, can he can dice up any defense if you give this man time. But as long as he has pressure on his back, as long as he ends up on his back as much as he did yesterday, then these guys don't stand a chance. No run game plus pressure equals losses for the Jets. They have to figure that out. But if they can, he'll be able to go out there and help these guys win some ball games. Yeah, I mean, they, we, the parade from the, that last game against the Patriots <laughs> is over. Now they really, really need a win against maybe the best team in football on a different continent. That should be easy. I, I, I have to let everybody know, as the only person on the show who was in the New York, New Jersey area yesterday, because Peter was traveling in the afternoon I was here, it was disgusting outside <laughs> yesterday. It was one of the worst days I have seen since I've moved here nine years ago. It wasn't just wet and gross. It was like it wasn't even cold. It was that, like, hot, wet. It was just absolutely like hot, disgusting. Wet. I didn't want to step out my front door to pick up my wife's Amazon packages. Like, I was like, ew, it was gross. It was a hot, disgusting wetness out there that I think greatly impacted the game. Mm -hmm. It's not an excuse, of course. The Broncos had to play in the same disgusting, hot wetness that they don't even live in, and their rookie quarterback threw a touchdown, whereas the four-time MVP did not. But it would have been bad enough to just the game goes terrible and you lose to the Broncos at home. Therein lies then afterwards, there was a media moment, okay? So mm -hmm. the Jets, if you didn't see the game, had a ton of penalties. Specifically, they had a ton of false start penalties. The offensive line jumping. And you know Rodgers, like he is the maestro in the Michelangelo of the hard count and the cadence. And after so many false start penalties, Robert Sala said after the game that uh, I want to get this right. We got to figure it out whether or not we're good enough or ready to handle all of the cadence. <laughs> so afterwards, the Jets media went to Aaron Rodgers and said, what do you think about that suggestion from the coach? The cadence specifically, Robert said, that might be something you guys have to dial back a little bit. Um, is that something you think could potentially help the situation? It's one way to do it. The other way is... Hold them accountable. I mean, we haven't had an issue. We've had one false start. Morgan had one false start, I believe, until this. So, you know, it's been a weapon. We use it every day in practice. We don't, you know, we rarely have a false start. And to have, I don't know, five today, it seemed like, four or five. Yeah, that's, that seems like an outlier. I don't know if we need to make mass changes based on, you know, kind of an outlier game. 
So it's, it's, a, it's a cool, a little bit icy response that everyone here is running with and uh, accountability oh. is the buzzword today. Listen, don't, don't even suggest to Rodgers that you're going to take away his cadence. He <laughs> loves that cadence. That's like telling Michael you're taking away his fadeaway jumper. Like that, he basically invented that as one of his prime weapons. So if I'm Rodgers, I'm saying, yeah, okay, so let's, let me change up the cadence I've been doing 20 years because our stupid linemen can't stay on the right timing and they're too confused by it. Like, that's the subtext there if it's me. Like, I've been doing that cadence since my head coach was a quality control coach who God knows where. I know what I'm doing. We did it in camp. We do it in practice. One of our linemen didn't like the weather today and he kept jumping off sides. So, yeah, let's change the entire cadence instead of going to him and saying, get your head in the game. He's right, in my opinion. The problem is, guys, like, the, the, the chemistry with Garrett Wilson is not there. It's just it's palpable when you watch the game. The running game is not there. It's palpable when you watch the game. And what you hope for is that it was a disgusting, terrible, hot, disgusting day in which Denver also was terrible on offense, and that you go and that you just look at that as that terrible week four outlier where the conditions were horrible and we didn't have our act together. That's the hope. But there is not a lot of that sentiment here. I'm not going to say last week they were world beaters and this week in the most disgusting day in the history of New Jersey, they couldn't play well, so they suck now. I'm not doing it. But there is the whole sentiment here, too, and you guys will get this, that that shot of Rodgers with the towel over his head, the classic punchline everywhere is there, there. That's the moment. This is the moment he becomes a New York Jet officially. He is now baptized in Jethood. It's the classic BS Jets fans, same old Jets that they scream and that they call the radio shows about. And the same people were calling the radio shows last week and saying, I'm going to buy my Super Bowl tickets. I, we'll see what happens in London. It's a big game for them. Let's put it that way. Kyle, a couple of requests. I'm going to need you to stop saying hot yeah. and disgusting in the same sentence. You've you filled your quota for the day. It's hot enough. And wet. Under hot and wet and disgusting. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm on the Jets sideline this Gross. weekend for uh, in London's Vikings Jets. I will be in their production meetings. We are going to have Sala. We're going to have Rogers. Kyle, I am curious. How do you think one would approach a conversation in a room after seeing a game like that, knowing what was said after the game? I got to sit down next to Aaron Rodgers, look him in the eye, and ask him a question. I'm, I'm wondering what you would ask him after hearing what he had to say about Salah. How's things with Salah, Aaron? How's the relationship going? I don't know. Right to it. The, the, the guy's been through everything. Like, that's the good advantage you have here is that he doesn't become, like, wrapped up in these moments. It's the same thing when he was fighting, allegedly, with Garrett Wilson in the preseason. It's like, guys, it's just football, all right? The cadence thing is not going to bring down the 2024 Jets. If they can't run the ball, it might, but it's not going to be a matter of Rodgers' cadence. Just go right to him. He appreciates direct questions, and he'll answer anything. That's my advice. You start, off, Jamie, asking him, you start off asking about House of Dragon and maybe you ask him about the show Hacks on HBO uh, Max, okay. and, like and then you ask the hard one. Real quick, Smart. though, Smart. I, we wouldn't be doing ourselves justice as a show that covers 32. Vance Go Joseph's on. Broncos defense yesterday was outstanding, and that Broncos team found a way to win after being yeah. playing in Tampa, spending the week in West Virginia. They practiced on a tennis court in an indoor bubble on Friday because of the hurricane, and then went into the Jets building, and they beat them. So I think uh, Big Cat from Barstool had this. This was – the revenge game for Peyton, for Sean Payton after the revenge game that Hackett had last year. So it's the revenge of the revenge game. Mm -hmm. And now the Broncos hold serve and the Jets can get a revenge game from that revenge game mm -hmm. next year. Okay.